So for my presentation, what I'm going to talk about is aerogel. I heard about aerogel because it was used when we were trying to discover what comets were made of. So I've got with my mouse right here, you're going to see this little plate thing here. This plate thing was made entirely of aerogel. And what they were using is they are using it as a giant net. So when they wanted to get behind this comet, which is shown right here, they would fly up right behind it, and this acted like a net. So I wanted to know what it was all about. So what it is, is it's made up of two different things. We've got benzene groups right here. The difference between them is we've got alcohol groups on one of them and amine groups on the other. Now we go through a process called polymerization, and what we end up with is a series of networks of them and we, until we get a giant netting of them. So it's basically two benzene rings, and they're connected by sole gel polymerization. Now what that basically means is if you picture a bunch of spaghetti strands, a polymer is just a giant strand of them. And what happens is with polymerization, we're taking it and we're causing cross-linking. So you're having the spaghetti Getty strands connected both vertically and horizontally. So you're producing this basically 2 or 3D structure. And we can see this right in the hand. We can see it's transparent. It's all covalent bonds and London forces that hold this together. The liquid, once it's drained away, we got a substance that's 99% air. It's the lowest density substance ever created. Now it was first discovered in the 1930 as basically a a way of wondering whether we could drain away all the liquid from a solid and have it just be a solid without it shrinking. They thought it was a neat experiment, but they didn't see the point of it until about the 1970s, when they realized that it might be used in high-tech physics labs as a particle accelerator. Eventually, in 1990, NASA started to fund the research behind uh, aerogels because they wanted to use it for their spacecrafts. In fact, here we got a picture of the Mars rover. A lot of the Mars rover architecture is insulated with aerogel. Okay, it's 99% air, and it lacks the substance, which is why it lacks substance, which results in being an excellent insulator. It's a thousand times less dense than glass, and 30 times more insulating than fiberglass. What's great about this is there's, there's very little waste. It's an extremely good insulator. We would be able to use these in our houses, in the walls, and as a result, we'd save a lot of energy that we use to warm and cool our houses. There's also no hazards with removing this stuff, unlike things like asbestos, which can be extremely dangerous to remove. We'd also be able to use this in our coat and other clothing. Okay? As well, disposing of it's not a problem. Right now, when we try to get rid of insulation from homes, it's a nightmare, because asbestos can cause massive health problems, and fiberglass has a whole process for being recycled. And then, because this is so little of it is actually substance, if we break up, there's very little that's left over. 